Ladies and gentlemen, I finally have good news. Do you ever have that feeling? I actually know a lot of you have the same feeling because I get a lot of comments about this, but do you ever have that feeling when you're reading news and you're like, geez, another bad news story, more bad news, the radical left are violating this, that, and the next. It's always just like hanging on our shoulders. Well, this week, I'm scrolling through Twitter, I'm scrolling through my news feed, I'm scrolling through all the different websites that I visit, you know, to look and source news stories and everything that's going on. And I literally exclaimed out loud, I was like, yes, this is what I like to see. Because in San Francisco, where they have just one of the horrendous vaccine mandates, it's one of the ones like the mafia style one, where the government is forcing private businesses to be the vaccine mandate enforcers. Basically, the business, the onus is on the business owner to enforce the government's vaccine mandate. In San Francisco, there's an In-N-Out burger. Now, of course, there are hundreds of these in California. Um, but a location in San Francisco was closed down, actually, by San Francisco um, health officials because they were, the, allegedly, the allegation is that In-N-Out was refusing to enforce the vaccine mandate. Now, this was true and it was not true. So In-N-Out actually says, um, and this is a quote, our store properly and clearly posted signage to communicate local vaccine requirements. This is what um, the legal officer of In-N-Out says. After closing our restaurant, local regulators informed us that our restaurant associates must actively intervene by demanding proof of vaccination and photo identification from every customer, then act as enforcement personnel by barring enter entry for any customers without the proper documentation. So obviously, clearly, this is totally insane. This is what made me exclaim out loud. Are you ready for this? In and out says, quote, we refuse to become the vaccination police for any government. I love this so much. I love this so much. First, it was the Southwest pilots. Then it was the Delta CEO. Now it's in and out. I mean, I'm going to California. I'm leaving for California tomorrow, actually. I'm a vegan and I will be going to in and out Any business who actually stands firm in principles, actually risks part of their business to stand up for people's freedom, you have my undying support. You have my support. You will have my financial support. Like I said, I will buy a burger there and I don't even eat meat. I love that sentence so much. We refuse to become the vaccination police for any government. I've been waiting a year and a half. You and I both, we all have been waiting a year and a half for people in positions of influence and power to stand up and put a stop to the COVID abuse that is happening at the hands of our government, whether it's local government, whether it's state government, whether it's the federal government, and it's finally happening. In and out calls these vaccine mandates unreasonable, invasive, and unsafe. Yeah, you think? And they actually go further. They say, they accuse the city of asking restaurants to segregate customers based on vaccine documentation. They say, quote, we fiercely disagree with any government dictate that forces a private company to discriminate against customers who choose to patronize their business. This is clear governmental overreach and is intrusive, improper, and offensive. All I have to say is amen to that. Finally, finally, the Democrats have taken it too far. And it's not just with the vaccine mandates. They have taken it too far in an area that it doesn't matter your politics, you will be appalled. I'm Liz Wheeler. Welcome to The Liz Wheeler Show. This has been a very interesting thing to observe the last year and a half what exactly the line is for the American people of what is too far. Like, how far is too far for the Democrats to take it before the American people say stop? I actually have been kind of disappointed that it's um, that the line is this far to the left. I thought that shutting down churches a year and a half ago, I thought that closing people's business, forcing them to stay inside, masking them outdoors, arresting paddle boarders in the middle of the ocean, I thought all of that would have been the line that, regardless of your politics, it would have caused people to say, enough, stop, no. We refuse to comply with this absolute, utter, tyrannical nonsense. Unfortunately... That wasn't the line. That wasn't the line that caused at least the majority of people to say, okay, stop, we are not going to accept this anymore. But the Democrats, all of the sudden, the Democrats have pushed just one step too far and the American people are saying, enough. And we're gonna talk about this in just a second, but first I wanna talk to you about Paint Your Life. Do you see this painting behind me of this hideous, ugly little dog in this portrait? This is Sweet Ugly George, his official name. It is our post-production manager, Victoria's uh, pet beast. This is what's so cool about paintyourlife.com. You literally get to turn your favorite memories into artwork that lasts forever. You can submit a picture of your most emotional life moments and a professional artist paints it into a painting. 
This is such a meaningful gift for birthdays, anniversaries, weddings. This is exactly the kind of gift I like to receive. And when I first saw this, I thought, well, it's cool, but I bet it's really expensive. Not so. It is actually very affordable and it's fast. You can receive your portrait in as little as two weeks. You can send any picture, yourself, your spouse, your children, your family, a special place you love, someone you love who isn't around anymore, a cherished pet, an ugly beast, even an action shot of you or your children playing your favorite sport. At paintyourlife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now is a limited time offer. You can get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word Liz to 64,000. Liz to 64,000. Paintyourlife.com is so much fun and our viewers get a special offer if you text Liz to 64,000. Paintyourlife.com. So Democrats have taken this a bridge too far. Um, this was a heartrending thread that I saw on Twitter that I wanted to share with you because I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. If you read this and you don't think this is horrendous, then I don't even know how to talk to you. So basically a sweet little girl named Sophia who has Down syndrome came home from school uh, with a face mask tied to her head with a rope. I wish I were exaggerating. This is what, I'm gonna read the tweet thread to you because I wanna get the details correct. Shocking and disturbing. Parents discovered that their seven-year-old little girl with Down syndrome has had a mask tied to her head against her will since Brevard schools instituted their illegal mask policy. By the way, this is in Florida, where schools are not allowed to force students to wear a mask if their parents don't want the students to wear that mask. Brevard schools did it anyway. The parents, the tweet thread says, were unaware this was happening until the child came home one day with a saliva-soaked mask tied with nylon rope around her head. Does this make you sick to your stomach? Because it makes me sick to my stomach. Sophia is nonverbal, the thread says, has an oversized tongue and has sensory issues that prevent her from being able to wear a mask. The parents instructed the school that she was not to wear a mask due to her special needs after they learned that a mask mandate was put in place. They had no reason to believe their sweet little girl was being forced to wear a mask all day against her will because she went to a school without one. She came, or she went to school without one. She came home without one. And the teacher never reached out to the parents expressing an issue with Sophia keeping a mask on. When a mask was put on her face, she would immediately remove it. Again, she has sensory issues. But for some reason, the adult that was supposed to be caring for Sophia felt the need to clip a mask to her face to prevent her from removing it. And when that didn't work, the adult resorted to tying it on with a rope. What has happened to our society? The thread says, we have grown adults bullying and abusing our innocent children over a piece of cloth on their faces. Do we not see the absurdity in this concept? And despite what anyone tells you, there's absolutely no science that supports doing this to children. Sophia's story is horrific and should upset everyone, including Jenkins Brevard, who represents the school in District 3, where this incident took place. Instead, she's been too busy going on a national media tour to care about the very children she voted to force masks upon. By the way, the parents are going to sue, sue this school board, um, as they should. Um, I, 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 I almost don't know what to say here. October is National Down Syndrome Awareness Month. We already commit this horrendous genocide against children who are diagnosed with even the possibility of Down syndrome in the womb. And now, Sophia is seven years old. Sweet Sophia, look at her picture on the screen. Look at this sweet and precious child. These evil school administrators tied this mask on with a rope. I mean, if I were the parent of this child, I would go ballistic. Yeah, you bet your tail I'd be suing this school district. I don't even know how I would possibly react to this. This is child abuse to the highest regard. In the name of what? Not in the name of science. Not in the name of safety. Not in the name of protecting Sophia and those around her. No, no. This is in the name of wokeness. In the name of virtue signaling. They harmed this tiny child. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Look at her sweet face. Sophia's not the only victim of wokeness. Those who are imposing a woke agenda on us don't care the little girls who are harmed. Just look at Loudoun County to see the same thing. The woke agenda in Loudoun County, the transgender, gender-neutral bathrooms, who is it hurt? It hurt a little girl, a ninth grade girl whose life has been forever changed because she's been physically violated because a boy wearing a skirt went into the gender-neutral bathroom and allegedly raped her. And how does Loudoun County react? They react with wokeness. And it, we're going to talk about that because it's even worse. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to talk to you about a disco. 
I think it's pretty universal. And if you are a man, um, you know that you should be using some sort of skincare products on your face, but you're never sure exactly what to use. So sometimes it ends up that you just don't do it. Let me tell you, my friends, that is bad because don't you want to eliminate those bags under your eyes? Don't you want to help heal your dry skin? Does your partner maybe want you to make some changes? Are you tired of razor burn? If any of this rings a bell with you, then you should try the skincare line that my husband has been using recently. It's called Disco. Disco is a clean skincare brand based in Austin, Texas. All Disco products are created specifically for male skin issues like under eye bags, dark circles, acne, razor burn, oily skin, dry skin, wrinkles, you name it. Disco products are easy to use, effective, affordable. They take the guesswork out of it. And it's made right here in the United States, which we all love. Um, their starter set, the Disco starter set is a no-brainer. It comes with the face cleanser stick, the exfoliating face scrub, and the hydrating face moisturizer. Um, and it tells you exactly what to do. There's no guesswork. If you want to check out Disco and try their incredible skincare products for yourself, we have a special offer for the Liz Wheeler Show audience. Go to letsdisco.com and enter Liz at checkout for 30% off your first order. That's letsdisco.com with Liz for 30% off your first order. It's a great deal. Thank you, Disco, for that. So the wokesters in our country don't care who they're harming with their woke agenda. Their woke agenda, they put on a higher pedestal than even little girls that it hurts. Loudoun County is a perfect example of this. Their transgender bathroom policy led to a boy in a skirt sexually assaulting a ninth grade girl um, whose father was called after this incident. He he arrived at school, obviously irate. His daughter was just raped. I, again, I, I sometimes am empathetic to the point that I put myself in the position of these people who have been wronged. And I don't, I, it's unfathomable what they must be feeling and how they must um, react, how they must react because it's so awful to think of your child going through this. And it's hard not to put yourself in that empathetic position where you're imagining what they go through. I simply pray that this father has the grace to handle this situation um, because God gives us grace when we actually are facing these hardships that sometimes when those of us who are empathetic and trying to imagine what it would be like, do not experience. I certainly have a hard time putting myself in this position. The Loudoun County School District, after this girl had been raped, called the police, but they didn't call the police on the rapist. They called the police on the irate parent. This reporting by Luke Rosiak of The Daily Wire is absolutely outstanding, but it's also shocking because these people, these school administrators in Loudoun County put this transgender bathroom agenda so high on their priority list that they're willing to let a girl be raped. They let the rapist back in the school. He allegedly raped someone else because the trial date, his trial date has now been pushed back so that both of these sexual offenses can be prosecuted at the same time. If, as if this isn't horrendous enough, the prosecutor in Loudoun County is now trying to throw the father in jail for being unruly at a school board meeting when he was not allowed to talk about his daughter being raped in school. This prosecutor, by the way, and this is very interesting, this is not something that you will hear um, about this story. This prosecutor was given $659,000 to her campaign by George Soros. Because this is what's happening. You'll hear mention here and there of this progressive prosecutor project. And this is a very real threat to our communities and to our families and to the safety of our children. This is, it's very easy actually for these down ballot races in our communities at the local level for us to ignore them because they don't get the media attention that the national level does. There's not the drama that happens in Congress or the presidency or primaries of um, very high-profile politicians. But what George Soros and his leftist ilk are doing is they're funding prosecutors who are actually anti-prosecution. They don't believe in enforcing the rule of law. They don't believe in criminal statutes. They're just using their position as prosecutor to go after those who counter the radical leftist ideology. We saw this in St. Louis with the infamous gun couple, right? We saw that when they defended their homes from black, their home from Black Lives Matter rioters who threatened to burn it down, they defended their home by holding up a firearm. They were the ones that were prosecuted versus the rioters who were trespassing on private property and threatening to harm the couple's dog and burn down their house. So that prosecutor in St. Louis was also funded by George Soros. This prosecutor in Loudoun County, the same. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to her campaign. And what does she do? She goes after the father for disorderly conduct because he was irate because his daughter had been raped. Are you kidding me? 
Are you inhuman? It's awful. And so th- this is what I would this is what I would say. The Republican Party and the conservative movement has an opportunity. Going into the midterms in 2022 and then the presidential election in 2024, the temperature of our nation is such that the environment is ripe for Republicans to take back power, as we should, because the leftist agenda pushed by these Democrat politicians is harming our families. And so the right should not push this as a right versus left issue. They should not push it as a Republican versus left issue. They should paint this as it is. It should be parents versus the left. Because you don't have to be a Republican to be horrified that this ninth grade girl was raped by a man wearing a skirt in a so-called gender neutral bathroom. You don't have to be a conservative to be horrified about this. You don't have to be a diehard, lifelong Republican voter. You don't even have to be a Trump supporter to know that critical race theory is racist, that radical sex ed is inappropriate for children, that putting wokeness ahead of children actually physically harms the kids, your kids, my kids. And so if Republicans want to win, they should talk to parents like the intellectual people that we are, and they should say, parents, it is you against the left. It is what you want or it is what the left wants. And then Republican politicians should promise to stand up for parents. If Republicans do that, they will win because the appetite in our country is to take back power from bureaucrats and politicians like McAuliffe, like the Secretary of Education under Biden, who don't think parents have any role in their children's education, who don't think parents should be able to say what books their children are reading or what their children are learning or have any say when there's a crime committed against their child in school. This is the bridge too far when the Democrats want to tell parents that we can have nothing to do with our children's education. And what happens, by the way, when the radical leftist ideology is successful at forming children, indoctrinating children, brainwashing children? What does this produce? Well, we all know that this produces like the mythical communist minion, right? The docile little socialist. But what does it, what, what does this look like non-hypothetically? We can see the fruits of the left's indoctrination in public schools. And what I'm talking about is there's a student at Oberlin College. Oberlin College is in my home state of Ohio. Again, another Ohio story that doesn't reflect well on the state that I know and love. But there's a male student at the university who wrote an article in the student newspaper complaining because the um, repair people who installed a radiator in his dorm were cisgender men. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is that, according to this student, this student had a problem with a radiator being installed in his dorm because it was installed by cisgender men. I, I, I mean, this, this student is so incredibly damaged, I almost hesitate to make fun of him, but he's so damaged, and this is so ridiculous, that we have to call it out. So this is what... This is what he writes. He goes, I'm reaching out to you to give you an update on the radiator project. Starting tomorrow, by the way, this is an email that he received. On October 7th, residents of Baldwin Cottage received an email from Joss Matos, the area coordinator for multicultural and identity-based communities. Matos wrote, I'm reaching out to you to give you an update on the radiator project. Starting tomorrow, the contractors will be entering rooms between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. to install the radiators. This will mean that they will need to be in your room for a period of time to complete the work. Okay. Seems like a pretty innocuous message for a college student to receive. This is what he writes. He said, I had not been contacted about any sort of radiator installation before this email, so right away the word update stood out to me as untrue. I grew concerned reading the second line, which informed me that I had less than 24 hours to prepare for the arrival of the installation crew, and I was further perturbed by the ambiguous for a period of time. I don't want to be stereotypical here, but it sounds to me like this person is part of the drama program at this college because he is making the proverbial mountain out of a molehill, but it gets worse. He goes, in general, I'm very adverse to people entering my personal space. You live at a college, dude. You're in a dorm. You don't have personal space. He says, this anxiety was compounded by the fact that the crew would be strangers and they were more than likely to be cisgender men. He says, Baldwin College is the home of the Women and Trans Collective. The college website describes the dorm as a close-knit community that provides women and transgender persons with a safe space for discussion, communal living, and personal development. Cisgender men are not allowed to live on the second and third floors, and many residents choose not to invite cisgender men to that space. 
I was angry, he said, scared and confused. Why didn't the college complete the installation over the summer when the building was empty? Why couldn't they tell us precisely when the workers would be there? Why were they only notifying us the day before the installation was due to begin? I considered reaching out to Mados, the administrator, but what would I say? The college was unlikely to address any of my concerns the day before the scheduled installation, and if they did, it would more than likely be a passive, we are truly sorry for the inconvenience sort of way, punctuated by an insistence that I would not be excessively bothered and that the installation was necessary whether I liked it or not. This, by the way, again, this is the type of individual that is being turned out by the radical leftist ideology in the school system. I don't know whether he went to a public school or not, so I don't want to jump to conclusions, but he's a textbook case of exactly what happens when wokeism is implanted in a child's mind and it takes root. He is disturbed. He is unbalanced. He is incapable of being in the adult world, and clearly his expectations are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this happens no matter where you live, but this, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. He says, when the insistent knock eventually came, I scrambled to get my mask on and repeatedly shouted, coming through the door. Four or five construction workers stood outside, accompanied by someone who I could only assume by his neat polo and clipboard to be an emissary of the college. We stared at each other for a moment before I moved aside to allow the workers to enter. The emissary began issuing platitudes that the work wouldn't take long and encouraged me to prop open my door. I asked meekly if I could actually not have a radiator installed in my dorm. I knew the answer was no before I even had to say it, but hey, it was worth a shot. This is what happens to our society when students are indoctrinated with radical leftist ideology. This is what happens. And it's actually worse because when these students are actually even out of the university system, the college system, guess what happens to our society when these students are unleashed on the public? We're going to talk about that in just a second, but first I want to talk about Moink Box. Do you hear that? If you could see and taste this bacon from moinkbox.com, you would order it right now. And I'm telling you, you've got to get moinkbox.com. Now, I'm a vegan, you know that. I don't eat bacon. So I asked my husband, and he says, endorse, endorse. We got our moink box, and I cooked him, especially, I think his favorite right now is the salmon, but we also made a casserole out of the sausage. And um, let's just say my husband endorses it. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, wild-caught Alaskan salmon direct to your door. It helps family farms, actually, become financially independent outside of big agriculture. Their animals are raised outdoors. Their fish swim in the wild. Moink meat is free of antibiotics, hormones, sugar, and all the other gross junk that you find prepackaged in the meat aisle. Sign up at moinkbox.com slash Liz to get a year of bacon for free, and then pick which meats you want delivered with your box. You can change it anytime. So join the Moink movement today. Go to moinkbox.com slash Liz right now. Get free bacon for a year. That's one year of the best bacon you'll ever taste for a limited time. It's spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Liz. That's moinkbox.com slash Liz. So what happens when these children are indoctrinated with radical leftist ideology? They then go to colleges um, which cater to their unbalanced state as per the poor lad at Oberlin University who is clearly unfit to um, take part in adult society right now. Well, what happens when they actually get out of the university system? Well, we can see for ourselves. In New York City, New York City um, is now considering removing a statue of Thomas Jefferson. Yep, that's right, Thomas Jefferson. They claim that he was racist, which I suppose in some senses he was. He was a slave owner. There's nobody denying that that I know, certainly nobody on the right. Jefferson, however, also penned the document that led less than 100 years later to the abolition of slavery in our nation. And he did so knowingly. Jefferson himself put a sentence in the Declaration of Independence that would have abolished slavery. But the Southern states vetoed that and in order to at least set the stage for the abolition of slavery, that compromise had to be made. The point here is that these wokesters when they graduate from these government indoctrination centers known as public schools, they infiltrate our society. It's not just a matter of, oh, wait until these kids see the real, get to the real world, they're in for a rude awakening. No, no, these kids are now exporting the radical leftist ideology into the real world. They're bringing the wokeness with them. That's what's happening in New York City with this Thomas Jefferson statue. I mean, have you never heard of nuance? Imagine if we only erected statues to people who were without sin, who had never made a mistake who had never committed a wrong against a fellow man. There would be literally no statues anywhere except statues of Jesus Christ, which I'm not saying I'm opposed to erecting statues of Jesus Christ all over our country, but I think the leftists would be opposed to that. The leftists would be opposed to that. 
Um, again, just a side note, this fight against Confederate statues, as many of us said, was never about the Confederate statues themselves. It's about erasing history because erasing history is part of the indoctrination in colleges that is being exported to regular life by these children who have been brainwashed from kindergarten through senior year in college. I was at uh, several colleges this past week with the verdict with Ted Cruz um, tour. I was honored and delighted to be a part of this tour. We went to the University of Wisconsin Madison. We went to the univer or we went to Texas A and M, and we went to Catholic University. At Catholic University, especially, I was so encouraged to hear um, the questions from the, some of these students during during um, the live question and answer. I was surprised, to be honest. I will admit how many questions related to immigration because immigration can sometimes be a topic that. It's not boring, but it tends, the topic of immigration tends to appeal more or matter more to an older demographic. But no, these students were absolutely fabulous. They had nuanced, educated, really good intellectual questions on immigration um, and about how we handle it from a humanitarian perspective, while also coupling that from the legal perspective that we need our nation to have a nation of borders. And obviously, the answer to that is quite simple in the sense that it's not humanitarian to allow what's happening at the border to continue to happen because what's happening is young women and children are being trafficked and raped and sold into sex slavery and treated horribly by the cartels and the coyotes that are trafficking them because of the lax border policies of the Biden administration. So there's nothing humanitarian about that, even if the stories and the experiences of these women and children in their countries of origin are horrible. There's nothing humanitarian about ushering them from that horrible situation into another horrific situation. But that being said, Senator Cruz has just introduced a bill, which I think, I, I, I love the combination, let's just say, of when a piece of legislation is both trolling the left, but it's also a good idea. And that's what this bill from Senator Cruz, he introduced a bill that would change the port entries of the United States, change them away from you know, Texas is a big one. That's where the Del Rio crisis was in, a red, in the red state of Texas. So the state of Texas, even though it's a red state, was being punished by the blue policies from the Biden administration. Well, Cruz says that we should change the ports of entry for where we process um, illegal immigrants. And guess where he proposed in this bill to make the new ports of entry? This is so hilarious. Um, he wants to do it in Delaware, nearby to President Biden's vacation retreat. That's right. He says um, he wants to take the border problem straight to, quote, where Democrat elites host their cocktail parties. He proposes 13 locations, including Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, Newport, Rhode Island, North Hero, Vermont. Um, that one, by the way, is the summer home of Bernie Sanders. I think this is a fabulous idea because I have a feeling that these leftists, if their towns and their cities were overrun, if trafficking was happening under their nose, if it was dangerous to go out of their house to let their children play in the yard, Maybe, 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 maybe they would handle immigration just a little bit different because that's the thing about the left. They always take it a bridge too far when it hurts you and it doesn't hurt them. And that's what's happening right now. It's immigration crisis. Do you know how much it's costing you and I because the Biden administration refused to continue Trump's Remain in Mexico policy? We are now paying almost $25 million, $24.6 million every single month for tent courts in Texas because Biden wouldn't continue the Remain in Mexico policy. Can you even fathom that amount of money? At the same time, the Biden administration is taking chartered flights and dropping underage illegal immigrants, these migrants, in cities across America. So children, unaccompanied minors, are being dropped in cities across America overnight. Overnight! In the suburbs of New York, the Biden administration is just releasing these children. Can you believe this? A bridge too far is the theme of the show. And this is a bridge too far from the Biden administration. A bridge too far. And I think the American people are waking up to this. Also, also a bridge too far. Um, my husband is a huge fan of Tom Brady. He grew up in New England, Patriots fan, now a Bucks fan because he's a Tom Brady fan. And he and I watched this video of Tom Brady talking to um, Snoop Dogg the other day. And um, for, first of all, let me show you this clip. Okay, let me show you this clip. And because I, we, we had, my husband and I had a very interesting discussion about this, but take a look. Come on, TV. They don't, they don't know that every Super Bowl that you was a part of in New England, I was at the party. I partied mm -hmm. with you, everyone. Despite being a Steeler fan, I showed up for my Patriots. I showed up for TV. 
and Mr. Kraft and them. And I was performing. I was hanging out. I was doing everything needed to be a part of the Patriot family. And I appreciate y'all for welcoming me. That was love. Always. You know, when Snoop was there, it was a good, it, it was the best time. So there was always requests for who Mr. Kraft would always ask the guys, who do you guys want? Snoop was always the first one out of our mouth. So, you know, he's a part of some of the best moments in my life. And I actually have a funny story. So after the game that we won in Atlanta against the Rams, Snoop was there. And um, I brought my, so my son was 11 at the time to the after party and the game ended pretty late. So it was midnight. It was in our hotel. So we had this little special, special spot on the stage. Well, Snoop had a pole up and there were some girls, they were clothed, but at the same time there was a pole and my son was here. He had his eyes open and he was listening to music. And I said, Jack, cover your eyes. And he goes, dad, I'm good. I'm good. So it's <laughs> two in the morning. And I mean, we were having the time of our life and I'm like, holy cow. If he tells his mother, I am, I ain't going to see this kid for a long time. But Jack, Jack, my nephew, Jack and the Beanstalk. I'm telling you, we, it was one of the best <laughs> moments of my life. We still talk about it too. I said, Jack, and he goes, dad, I'm good. All right. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Keep that under your head, Jack. That's right. He's growing up quick, that boy. That's what I'm talking about. That's the beauty about being a father, man. You get those precious moments that those are going to remain forever. Yeah. Trust me, Tom. Those are going to yeah. remain forever, brother. For sure. Okay. So like I said, my husband is a diehard Tom Brady fan. I'm talking like the one time that they lost in the Super Bowl, he ripped a poster. This is back when we were dating years ago. He ripped a poster. He'd probably hate me for telling this story. He ripped a poster of Tom Brady off of his wall um, and put it in another room because he couldn't bear to look at it because he was so devastated that the Patriots had lost the Super Bowl. That's the kind of Tom Brady fan that my husband is. And so when we saw this clip of Tom Brady joking about taking his 10 or 11-year-old son um, to a performance of Snoop Dogg, I don't know. It, 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 it's an interesting cultural moment here because Tom Brady shouldn't be doing this. He shouldn't be doing this. Snoop Dogg is very personable. He's very likable. Um, in his own odd way. But Snoop Dogg is extremely unfamily friendly. I mean, look at some of the lyrics that's in Snoop Dogg's song. This is not something that children should be listening to. Honestly, it's really not something that should be listened to at all because it's misogynistic, it's sexist, it's violent, it's horrible. And Tom Brady is joking about taking his 11-year-old son not only to a Snoop Dogg performance, but where there's strippers on stripper poles, even if they're clothed. This is an opportunity. I don't mean to sound preachy here, but this is not something a good father does. A good father protects his son from being corrupted by people like Snoop Dogg, by lyrics that Snoop Dogg is singing, and certainly by, by strip shows. This is not cool. Very uncool, Tom Brady. I wish that you had actually taken the opportunity to be a, uh, a role model here and said, actually, I protected my son from this because this is not something that children should be watching. Um, uh, I, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. Uh, those of you who have children, especially young sons uh, and our football fans, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. If you want to go over to lizwheelershow.com slash locals and weigh in, tell me what you think. Tell me if I'm wrong, my husband's wrong, lizwheelershow.com slash locals. Speaking of locals, before we are done for today, I want to give a huge shout out to the locals VIP of the week. That would be um, Libertarian. That would be OR Libertarian. I assume that means maybe Oregon Libertarian. Welcome to the Liz Wheeler Show community on Locals. We are delighted to have you. We are, as you know, a community of tens of thousands of like-minded people, patriots who want to fight for the principles that we hold dear in our country. Locals um, is a fabulous place. It's my pal Dave Rubens, free speech, censorship, free community. So we discuss things that maybe we wouldn't be allowed to discuss on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or other big tech platforms. Um, there's also for VIPs over on Locals, there's exclusive behind the scenes access um, to this show. We have question and answers. We have live streaming stuff. We have extended segments, all sorts of good stuff over there. So Oregon Libertarian, Welcome to the Liz Wheeler Show community and anybody else who is not a part of our community, we invite you to join us, lizwheelershow.com slash locals. All right, on that note, think for yourself, use critical thought, question authority, follow the facts, and don't let anybody bully you into being a sheep. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star rating. Write us a glowing review. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is the Liz Wheeler Show. The Liz Wheeler Show is produced by Jonathan Hay. Executive producer, Chad Abbott. Director of photography, Kevin McRoberts. Editor, Alejandro Figuerilla. Assistant editor, Michael Wall. Sound mixer, Robin Fenderson. Post-production manager, Victoria Metzel. Director of marketing, Emily Washler. Production and talent coordinator, Matt Toffler. And senior publicist, Patricia Jackson. This has been a Soundfront production. If you haven't already,
already, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.